summer of 2021, the US Navy generated a massive mega blast that sent shockwaves to the Gulf of Mexico. It was so strong, it triggered an earthquake of 3.9 magnitude at sea, 160 kilometers off the coast of Florida. But this wasn't by accident. They were testing the seaworthiness of the USS Gerald R. Ford, one of the largest and most advanced warships in the US Navy. Sea trials are brutal but crucial for all ships. It's kind of like test driving a car or testing a car before its launch. To get a better understanding of how these trials work, we brought in some help. My name's Frank Kowalski and I'm Managing Director of Safe Haven Marine. We specialize in building search and rescue boats, all weather pilot and patrol boats. And as part of uh, our testing, we do tend to take the boats out and test them in some pretty extreme conditions. So how extreme do these trials get? Let's find out. Welcome to Explain. Ships have to be ready to encounter anything at sea. And as they've gotten bigger, intense sea trials have become crucial. Crew members call it the shakedown crews. All hands are on deck to find flaws, and everything from the ship's build to its technology and propulsion system are tested in real-life conditions. Testing gets pretty extreme and depends on the type of vessel it is. But the craziest tests are done to Coast Guard rescue boats, icebreakers that go into polar waters, warships, and heavy transport semi-submersibles that literally have to carry broken down warships and oil rigs on deck. It's really only in, in these sea trials that you undercover or uncover any kind of faults that might manifest themselves or, or be apparent. So you really have to test the boat pretty properly, you know, sometimes in rough weather. You know, you could have a fire, uh, you could have some pipe burst and, you know, that seawater into the boat, uh, you know, could have something like this, but going to be pretty rare. But yeah, that will be the worst case scenario. Let's look at some of the crazy tests common to all of them before we get into the specific tests. Starting with speed trials. Speed trials test how fast a ship can go and if they meet specific speed requirements. Kind of like testing how fast a car can go. The ship runs a course several times covering the same ground area in opposite directions. The engine is pushed to 75% power, then 85% power, and finally at 100% power. And the ship's speed is measured at each output. Next is the turning circle test. The turning circle test is done to see how tightly a ship can turn. It's sort of like the equivalent of drifting or doing donuts with a car. They take the ship to a certain speed, make a tight turn right, and hold it there until the ship makes a complete circle. Then they resume a steady course, making a tight turn left, and have the ship do a circle in that direction. Now the tests get even more extreme. Special operations rescue boats like the one used by the Coast Guards undergo an insane self-writing test. The chances of these rescue boats getting hit by large waves is high. That's why they're designed with the ability to turn back up again automatically. And it's one of the coolest things we've seen. A crane tilts the boat on its side to the point of vanishing stability. Then it's pushed to 120 degrees and forced to flip upside down. But because of the boat's low center of gravity and the buoyancy of its superstructure against the water, the boat automatically turns back to an upright position. How cool is that? Come on, put the line, come on. Come on, keep going. Come on, come on right? Woo! Woo! You think you're going to be able to hold on to the side of the seat or a grab rail beside you, but actually you soon realize when you when you get past about 120 degrees that there's no chance of that happening, you can't hold on. So you're really just depending on the safety harness. It's when you're hanging upside down, that's what's holding you back into the seat. Yeah, so that was the most interesting thing. And the other thing was just seeing the water rise up the windows. Yeah, that's quite stressful. They're also put through the rough sea test. When a storm hits and other ships return to the harbor, rescue boats often have to go out into the storm. 
so they have to be tested in rough sea conditions. Next are the icebreakers that go through ice trials. Icebreakers make the most remote parts of the world accessible. They're designed to break through the thickest ice in the harshest polar conditions. These ships have a unique shape, super strong reinforced hulls, and use their weight and power to carve paths through ice fields as thick as three meters. One of the most unique tests during ice trials is the oblique test. Besides being able to break through ice while moving forward and backwards, the ship has to be able to break through the ice while moving sideways. Icebreakers also have to be able to do a police turn, which is basically a 180 degree turn on the spot. And some of them like the Polaris can make this turn in a little over a minute. Warships undergo some insane tests one of which is the full ship shock trial. Three, two, one. So why do they do this? During World War II, Many American warships were damaged by enemy mines and torpedoes that had missed their targets and exploded close to the ship underwater. Since then, the US Navy has tried to shockproof their ships to minimize damage from close explosions. You know, when a, when a bomb explodes on the water or, or close to a ship, it creates a, a tremendous shock wave that travels through the water. And when it's that close to the, to the ship, it's gonna hit the ship with quite a lot of force. So they're probably testing all the systems to see how that shock impacts on the boat, whether there's anything that fails, um, either electronically or structurally. Finally, it's time for the float on, float off operation test done by the big daddy of them all, the heavy transport semi-submersibles. These ships are ginormous and are designed to transport really heavy objects. To give you a sense of size, these vessels carry warships, cruise ships, over a dozen barges, or even oil rigs on their deck from one place to another. To load objects onto its deck, the ship needs to literally submerge itself underwater, and it can submerge itself as much as 30 and a half meters or 100 feet. First, the ballast tanks of the ship fill with seawater, which allow it to submerge its deck till it's sufficiently below the water surface. Then, tugboats pull the ship in place over its deck. The ballast tanks force the seawater out again, and the ship rises back up, lifting the load, and the object is secured. These ships are absolute monsters, and we can see why running proper tests on them is crucial. There are other tests that ships go through as well, like the Astern running test, where the ship's ability to move backwards is tested, and the anchor test. What's the most extreme test in your opinion? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Explained.